Let's say our agent is in this current position or state, and it has a choice of two actions, either flapping its wings and going up or letting itself drop. In DQN, we're trying to learn the Q value of the bird being in this current state and taking the current action, we'll call it action one. And also we're trying to find the Q value of taking action two. And through training, the bird eventually finds its way to the goal, which is to pass the pipe. And it gets some kind of reward that gets trickled back to the Q values. This is through repetitions of many, many iterations of the bird taking the upper path or the lower path. Now, what if the actions of either going up or down doesn't really matter? So for example, it goes up, it takes two actions and it achieves its goal. Or it goes down and it takes two actions and also achieves the goal. So essentially in this current state, the actions don't really matter. But the bird wasted a lot of time taking the upper path and also the lower path. Dueling DQN was introduced to address this inefficiency. In dueling DQN, instead of learning the Q values directly, it proposes to split the Q value into two components. The value of being in the state and the advantage of taking this particular action in this state and same thing down here. If taking the upper path is significantly better than the bottom path, we might see a huge discrepancy between the two advantage values. But if there's really not much advantage to either action, then we might see them going to zero. By separating the two components, it's much faster to learn the value. And then when we combine it back to the Q value, the function is Q equal to value plus the advantage minus the minus the mean of all the advantage values. This piece is used to normalize the advantage and it helps stabilize its training. Now let's jump to the code and see how we can uh, implement this. This is the DeepQ network module that we built in video number two. As you can see, this class is no more than 10 lines. What we have here is a basic three layer network this is the hidden layer, and this is the output layer. And remember the input layer in PyTorch is implicit, so we don't need code for that. We can make this DQN into a dueling DQN with uh, just a few lines. So let's, let's do it. I'm gonna add an input here. This flag here is going to let us enable or disable the uh, dueling DQN. Let me save this variable for later use. Now I'm gonna keep my first hidden layer and then I'll do the split here. Keep my original implementation here. This is where I'm gonna put my dueling DQN changes. First I'm gonna do my value layer. I'm going to add this layer comes right after the first fully connected hidden layer. So this is the output, which means we're taking in this number of nodes. And then uh, now I'm just going to be lazy and I'm going to hard code the output of this. From here, we're going to do the value output, the output of the previous layer down to one, one single value. So this is the value stream. Now let's do the advantage stream. So similar to the value, I'm going to add a advantages layer. So the output of the previous hidden layer goes into our advantage layer. I'm also going to just hard code the output of this. And then my advantages layer is going to go from the prior layer, 256. And the output is the, the number of actions. Okay, so you can see that regular DQN had one output layer, whereas in dueling DQN, we're splitting into two separate streams to calculate the value component and the advantages component. Now in the forward function, we'll keep the calculation, the value calculation for the first hidden layer. 
Here, let's preserve the regular DQ and implementation. Put it in the else statement. I set it equal to, we'll give it a variable named Q. We'll return Q. Now we deal with the dueling DQ and piece. Here we do the calculation for the value stream and the input would be X right here. Let's call it small v and we'll do the same value activation function. I'm calling the fc underscore value, this layer, to do the calculation for this layer. The input being the previous layer, the output of the previous layer. Now v is the output. We'll send that into the value function. Call this big V. Call self that value, which is this layer, and we'll pass in small v. Now we do the same thing for the advantages. I'll use small a, also do ReLU, and I'm going to use this layer right here. And it's going to take in the previous layer, which is x. Now I'll use big A to do the advantages, and we'll call self.advantages, pass in small a. Now we calculate q. And Q is V plus A minus the average of A. Remember when we send samples into the DQN, we're sending batches of 32 or 64 or whatever. And uh, this, these dimension, keep dimension, this is just to make sure that we select the right column and we keep the shape of the uh, final output. Best thing for you to do is put a breakpoint here run the code and then you can inspect the values it'll help you understand what this is doing and that's all the modifications that we need to do not even uh, 10 lines of changes now of course in our hyperparameters file i added a parameter to enable or disable dueling dqn and then in the agent file whenever we call the dqn class whenever we declare the dqn class uh, also need to pass in the flag if we want to disable dueling DQN. So that's pretty straightforward. Now let's do a test. I'll just do card pull so that we can see some quick results. Okay, training has started and every time it finds a new best reward, it will do a printout and then it will save the model. Okay, I'll pause the video. I'll be back in a few minutes and see how training is. Okay, it's been a few minutes and it looks like card pull can pretty much stay up forever. So let me start a new console and uh, I will run the agent, pass in the hyperparameter configuration, card pull one. Here we go. Okay, we're good with the dueling DQN implementation.